All right, I've convinced Ty to get in. <laughs> he doesn't look too excited about it. Well, we had sharks circling we the boat did. this morning. We did, so we moved so. anchorages. We moved over to the south side from the east side. Got a couple other boats over here. And we moved anchor once, and as we were pulling up the anchor, we had a shark circling the boat. And then we dropped anchor, and another one circling the boat. Now, that is what we expected, so it's it not is, what yes. freak out. No. It's just funny to see sharks circling <laughs> your boat and the water's so clear and there's a lot it's of fish. It's really and... clear. We're excited to get in. We're just going to do some like snorkeling and free diving right now first. Anchored at San Benedicto Island, part of the Revilla Hejedos Archipelago, several hundred miles off the coast of Mexico and known as one of the top dive sites in the world, as well as one of the sharkiest places, we had come out here to see the amazing marine life. Along with sharks, these islands are also known for their giant manta rays, which we were so lucky to encounter on our very first trip into the water. out at the islands here. Guys down here getting ready to top up our tanks. Had an awesome day yesterday. Went out and just kind of did some free diving and snorkeling along the lava flow here. And we saw a couple of manta rays, one smaller one and one huge manta. Amazing, amazing creatures. And a couple of sharks. Nothing, nothing crazy, a couple of little white tip reef sharks. They were pretty cool to watch. Tell everyone yeah. how our first dive went. And we tried to do our first dive yesterday. We were just gonna do a simple one. But had to abort pretty much right away because I managed to lose the GoPro. But luckily we came right back up, went out in the dinghy and we found it floating. So yay, we still have a GoPro. Now ties, about to start up the compressor. Fill the tank so we can dive. Yeah, excited. Volcanic in origin, San Benedicto is a small island, only about three square miles, and it's quite stunning to look at resembling more of a moonscape than anything else. The compressed ash and lava flows are evidence of its very recent volcanic activity. With our tanks full, we headed back down to reattempt our dive from the previous evening. We followed the anchor chain down to the bottom at 60 feet and set out to explore the nearby reef. As we had seen while snorkeling the previous day, there was an abundance of resident colorful fish here that were different from the fish that we had become familiar with around Baja. We tried to remember them all so that we could go back and ID them later. Later that afternoon, we went out for another dive along a ridge extending southeast from the anchorage, known as the canyon. This was the most convenient dive for us as it began at a large rock that came up within 20 feet of the surface, which was the perfect spot to anchor the dinghy only a few hundred meters from the south anchorage. On this dive, we finally got to see our fair share of sharks. There were several large white tip reef sharks, and we even saw a silky shark swim by off in the distance. Near the end of the ridge, at about 80 feet, is a sonar monitoring station for hammerhead sharks. 
We weren't lucky enough to see any hammerheads yet, but said hello to a large moray before making our way back to the surface. Right back there, that's Sedna. They are hauling up anchor. They came and met us out here at Isla San Benedicto. We met them back in the boatyard, but they are headed out for a very long journey. They're headed across to French Polynesia, South Pacific, taking off. There's some wind today, perfect time to leave. We have a visitor this afternoon on Varuna, hanging out with us. That right there is a silky shark. And apparently Hillary says we've got two of them circling us now. It's what we hear they like to do today. They like to circle anchoring boats. That's the silky sharks anyway. Mm -hmm. Not usually, they can be aggressive, but not no, usually aggressive. I mean, they eat, they eat small fish, so. Nothing really for us to be concerned about. But they're bigger sharks, they're pretty to look at. They are. Circling underneath Varuna, or oh, Arjuna, both. We have been out here at San Benedicto for a week now. And you're feeling a little bit under the weather the past few days here. A little bit, ear problems, uh, I'm just plugged up from the diving. So I don't want to go pushing it, I'm trying to let it clear up a bit. It's a bit better, it's still plugged a bit, but I, I kind of want to dive today. I'm just getting in the water. Yeah, it's nice. Yesterday I got in the water with one of the other sailboats here, the Ahona. We went, we tried to drop in kind of on the deeper end of this ridge that we've dove a few times and didn't quite find it, but still had a good dive. We saw a tiger shark when we first got in, which was awesome. Pretty big shark, big mouth, pretty. But he just checked us out and swam off, and yeah. It's been a slow couple of days for us here, actually, for quite a few days, because it's been very windy here, so we haven't accomplished as much as we'd like to. Oh, as I almost fall overboard, Hillary's up here. She's been working on some very, 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 very long overdue uh, covers for our jerry cans. Back behind me in the distance is Isla Socorro. It's probably the main island known out here, which is part of the Riviera Hejedos archipelago. All volcanic islands. Uh, the other couple of sailboats that were hanging out here with us headed that way today. Uh, we're staying up here for a little bit longer. We're hoping tomorrow will be some calm weather, and we're gonna try and head right around the corner to a place called the Boiler, which is a really great little diving spot. And I'm hoping to be able to get back in the water because I've been sitting out for a few days, my ears still a little plugged up. Um, it's not hurting or anything, but I'm just trying to let it get perfectly good so I can do some good diving again. Winds calmed down a little this morning. We moved around the north, what are we on the northwest side of Isla San Benedicto. Hillary's gonna jump in right now and just have a look at the anchor and make sure there's no big gnarly rocks in the way, right? Yep, go have a look. It's about 60 feet we're anchored in, so. 60 feet. Just confirm that it is sand on the bottom that we thought we saw. And it looks nice, but protected by these big rocks uh, called the Three Brothers, the Trace Hermanos. So these are the three brothers back here, the Trace Hermanos, and uh, she's gonna go have a jump in here. Looks like beautiful sand down there so far. Should be good. Two things we're checking for here. One is just to see what the bottom is. We're pretty sure it's a sandy bottom. And two, we want to make sure there is no big kind of gnarly rocks uh, in the path of that anchor as well, since we don't know too much about this anchorage. It's not really listed anywhere. No one's really mentioned it to us other than we saw the dive boats here. And we actually have one of the dive boats on AIS here. So what we did is we just, we can create a waypoint from AIS. Uh, so we find that helpful sometimes. If we see a boat somewhere, we create a waypoint so we've got it later on. All right, Hillary's giving me a thumbs up. All good. All sand, no rocks in sight. 
The boiler is probably the most infamous dive site at these islands, a huge rock three quarters of a mile offshore that comes up from 150 feet of water to 10 feet below the surface. It certainly is an impressive sight. We swam along the steep rock walls, which were absolutely stunning. However, we were disappointed that we didn't see any of the big animals that this spot is known for. Alright, we dove the boiler. The birds, we did. Dove the boiler today. What's well, called the boiler? L boiler? I don't know. It's just out there, it comes up to, well, I thought it said like 10 to 15 feet, but you thought it, about five, and it did look There were some shallow. spots that looked pretty shallow, but amazing visibility. Water is super clear, tons of fish. It was probably but, 120 foot visibility. I mean, you can yeah. see the bottom from the top easy. Big schools of tuna, a lot of fish. A lot of jacks Only out there. A couple of reef sharks. Yeah, that a couple. We saw. Mm -hmm. No mantas, no dolphins. We hear maybe morning's a better time for that. It wasn't the most pleasant dive though because of the strong current. There's a very strong north setting current. So that south side, you're just getting blown into the rocks. The only reprieve was on that north side, which unfortunately with the way the lighting is, the sun in the south sky right now, it was a little bit darker over there. It's pretty tough to anchor out there. Um, luckily there were no waves breaking on it today like there can be, but there's also the issue with mantas possibly getting tangled in your anchor line. So we wanted to tie up to one of the dive boats while they were out there. And all of the dive boats that we've run into have been so friendly but this boat was not very friendly at all. They kind of wanted it all to themselves. They said they didn't like to have other divers in the water with them. I, I get it, they've got a business and all, but everyone's been super friendly. And the fact that at least they were honest, they were honestly just said, we don't like to be around other divers. Yeah. We're around our own thing, so. That was a bit of a bummer, but they still, one of the, the blokes helped us out in the end and let us tie up to him. We didn't want to put an anchor down on top of the coral. And... Island looks beautiful though. Crazy volcanic yeah, island. Yeah, this volcano is just gorgeous. We're motoring out of this place now. We're gonna go back around to the south end, which was a little bit better protected. It's also a little bit more for us to do there. This one here is really not even an anchorage, but it's a good bottom, good holding, just deep. The boiler, the actual dive site, it's about a half a mile offshore. It's not the easiest place to get to. It's in the middle of all the swells. Uh, it can have breaking waves on it and it's not the safest place to be for just the two of us, which is why this morning we aborted it. We didn't go do the dive this morning. Didn't feel comfortable until the Savo when the dive boat came in. So we did a dive out there that made it a lot easier. But now we're gonna head back around the south end and hang out there. San Benedicto back here behind me. Crazy looking volcanic island out here in the middle of the ocean and it actually erupted fairly recently. It last erupted in 1952, and there was a boat out here that got a picture of it erupting. It looks crazy. Pretty cool looking island. We are back here on the south side of Isla San Benedicto. Went out and did an awesome dive this morning. Went that away over to the southwest side of the island. Over there we anchored the dinghy. There's a manta cruising around. Diving with these giant manta rays is an incredible experience. They're so graceful in the water and seem to be genuinely interested in and curious about divers. We were also struck by the unique markings and coloration, making each manta unique. And there was a nice little kind of ledge drop off that was really cool to check out.
back behind me, that dive boat back you can see over there, that is Solmar 5. And it's the crew from Pelagic Life that's there. They're doing filming for their second documentary. If you haven't heard of Pelagic Life before, they're this awesome Mexican nonprofit that does a bunch of shark and ocean conservation. They made a documentary called Mexico Pelagico. Really cool, you should check it out. And they're out here filming for a second documentary. Gonna make some bread here. Two loaves today. It's been, what, how long since we had bread? Probably been out been for like three or four or so. days or more, yeah? Yeah, almost a week. And I think right now we are negative two amps right now uh, while we're running the water maker. So that's pretty good. Not too bad. Yeah, it's doing really good. I think we're getting about eight to 10 gallons an hour. Uh, we'll run it for, I think I set the timer for an hour and a half, just heaps. We're just topping it up and trying to keep the water flowing through the membrane. We are trying to manta proof our dinghy anchor line. So the mantas, their eyes are on the sides of their head. They can't see forward necessarily. We've heard they can run into anchor line because it's so thin. They can't swim backwards, so when they run into it, they flip to try and get off, which just wraps the line around them, which is no good for them, no good for us in our dinghy. So we're adding these kind of long streamers on, about one every arm length, to hopefully make it a bit more visible. So what Hillary's doing there with the anchor line, is because we saw a manta there on our dive just before. Made us a little bit nervous because he was coming, trying to follow us, which is what they like to do, they like people. But he was like really close to us when we dropped down our anchor. So we kind of hung around the boat for a while, the dinghy there, to make sure that he didn't go near the anchor line and uh, wrap himself or anything like that. So that's why Hillary's going to try out the streamers. All right, Hillary's up early morning here. She's conducting an early morning raid of Isla San Benedicto. Uh, we're not actually allowed to go on this island. This is a rescue mission. Unfortunately, this morning we had the drone up and uh, it initiated an auto land and we were not able to cancel it for some reason. We couldn't hit the button. Why wouldn't you work button? Man, I swear that app or the phone, it's an iPhone. Anyway, Hillary's back there. She's paddle boarding in. We tried to take the dinghy in, but it's just a bit too much swell and we don't have oars right now. Our oars stand broke the other day. So we're gonna put a new oar stand in. God, we've gone through like four sets of oars. Another subject anyway. Uh, so we didn't want to go in with the motor, we had a look at it, it just looks a bit sketchy. Hillary's like, hey, let me take the paddleboard in, that'll be pretty easy. So we're going to watch now, hopefully she gets in alright and can locate the drone, which we were able to fly away from the volcano crater and have it land somewhere over here on shore, we believe. Well, it looks like we may have a successful mission here. I've been thinking for a little while now whether or not we should keep Hillary around. Um, now, take out the, the minor details that she's the captain of the ship and, and owns it and everything outright. The fact that she will paddle through shark, literally shark infested waters to illegally land on an island. I reckon that makes it a keeper. Drone rescue! Successful! Woohoo! Yeah! Yeah! That's right. We don't normally uh, do that because we're not supposed to go there. So we normally we respect that we haven't gone to land. It was in and out as quick as we could. Without that, we wouldn't be able to bring you any more pictures like this. Yeah, so super exciting drone rescue mission was totally successful. Ty was able to land it. I was able to get into shore, find it, and get back out without getting it wet. And now we're here, we're all by ourselves. We woke up this morning and all the other dive boats had left. It's just us here, which is pretty cool, pretty rare. We did do an awesome dive yesterday afternoon. We went out to what's called the canyon, which is that same spot just off the boat here we've been diving a lot. Out at the end, there is a hammerhead monitoring station for their little trackers, and it's also a cleaning station for them, where they swim by to get cleaned by little fishies. And when we went out there, we saw, we were so lucky, we saw a school of about 30 hammerheads swim by. So cool to see that many sharks all together. 
These guys were the scalloped hammerheads. And hammerheads are actually the only sharks that swim in schools, and no one knows exactly why, but pretty amazing to see. The only bummer is we only have the GoPros for our underwater our dive stuff. Um, we really wanted to get a dive housing for our good camera, this camera right here, but we just could not afford it. It's more than the price of the camera itself for just the housing, the dive housing. So we just have the GoPros, which don't really do it justice with their wide angle, but very, very cool to see regardless. Sun is going down. Big sun back there. Had a good day. We did two dives today. Our first dive we did along the same ridge that we've been doing. Out at the canyon dive site, the day after seeing the large school of hammerheads, we swam along the underwater ridge. Along the way, we passed some of the cleaner fish that are so critical to the ecosystem here. These fish, including the juvenile clarion angelfish and the barberfish, actually feed themselves by eating parasites and other matter from the skin and gills of larger fish, such as sharks and manta rays. This mutually beneficial relationship goes to show how interconnected and codependent marine ecosystems are. Along the ridge, we passed by lots of white tip reef sharks. We spotted a green moray and then surfaced through a large school of green jacks. And then this afternoon, we went around to the southwest point of the island, which is a really cool spot, but there was a lot of current this afternoon, which we didn't have yesterday. Made it a bit challenging getting down there, but cool spot still. We saw a big hammerhead swim by. And tons of the huge, the black jacks. Huge guys, and they just like follow you around. It's kind of funny, they're like little like dogs. I found a really cool urchin shell. Uh, that was pretty cool. Oh, it's a lobster. lobster. Ties up on deck there. Filling up our tanks after our dive this morning. Another good dive, yeah? That's great. Yeah, so we've really been liking this kind of southwest wall of the island. Mm -hmm. The only challenge is there seems to be a lot of current up at the surface. Once we get down, um, you know... 30 feet, it's fine. Below 30 feet, it's fine, but getting in, trying to get our gear on, get out of the dinghy, get the dinghy anchored, it's been a real challenge. Yeah, because we put most of our gear on in the water as opposed to putting it on in the dinghy. It's just the two of us, so it's a bit harder to get everything on and then fall out. First time there wasn't that much current there, but I think we must have just kind of hit it at a slack tide. So we need to kind of watch the tides a bit more and try and figure out when a slack is. Yeah. Yeah, once we get down there though, it's a cool spot. We saw another hammerhead swim by today. Came by nice and close, just kind of had a look. Just kind of cruised on by. A couple mm -hmm. of minutes there floating by us. Cool stuff. It's good diving. Tying the tank off so it doesn't topple over on us. Yeah, the anchorage is a bit rolly. Having the dive compressor on board really paid off for us out here. Although it was a big investment for us, even used, the ability to spend weeks on end at these remote islands, diving multiple times per day, is a pretty incredible thing. We feel so lucky to have our floating home, which gives us the ability to visit such remote places. That's all for this week, guys. Thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, a huge thumbs up goes a long way. 
And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe so you never miss an episode. Until next time, adios. Cheers. Hi. What? <laughs>